Um, this is Andrew, and in this video we're going to go over how to use Superior Drummer. Um, specifically, I'm using Logic Pro. Now, it, it shouldn't really matter too much which DAW you're using, um, but I'm using Logic, so that you should know ahead of time. Um, so what we're going to do is, by default, when you make a new project, you get this audio at the default. Now, Superior Drummer is a software instrument, so you want to go over here and click Software Instrument. Uh, these are the default settings that pop in, and they work for me. I've never had to touch these, but in case yours are different, maybe you want to change them to what I have. Um, so I'm just going to hit Create. And by default, when you uh, make your first track of this, you get this musical keyboard. If you hit Command-K, you can get rid of it, or Command-K to have it pop back on. You probably won't use that with Superior Drummer. Now, I also never use this side tab here, which is called the, the Library tab, um, and I always just close it. So you, you load your software instruments on this left panel here, which is kind of where you set all your settings for your actual track, which is what we have here. So by default, the e-piano loads, which is literally just a normal piano. So if I load up my keyboard here, we get this kind of keyboard. And there's, there's a bunch of settings in here you can play with, um, but we're not going to talk about that in this video. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to load the drop-down. And by default, when you install it, it's going to load into your AU instruments, at least on... Uh, logic. Um, and then it's going to be in Tune Track folder because that's a company that makes Superior Drummer. And then you're going to go to Superior. And then you have these two options here. I always use Stereo, which just puts your drum, um, your your software drum instrument onto one stereo track. Now there is a way to have it so that your actual drums will mix down into a bunch of different tracks, and you can handle all the mixing um, as separate tracks. We're not going to cover that in this video. Uh, maybe in the future I'll do that, but in the meantime, you can find a lot of stuff online of how to actually do that. So you click Stereo, and then this is the default uh, window you get for Superior Drummer 2, at least. And what you have is you just have a, whatever random load kit, or whatever random drum kit it loads in. You can actually click these drop downs and change the drums. So if I hit this bass drum, I get one sound. If I switch to this one, I get a different sound. And so I always use the 14 by 24, uh, just because I like it. <laughs> Snares, you have a bunch of different options. And you can mess with those to your, to your desire. Um, now for me, since I usually do metal stuff, so I go into tool settings. And this is where you can actually change um, your drumsticks and your bass drum beater. So I usually use plastic. Um, the beater is the part of the bass drum that actually hits the skin. Um, most metal drummers will use a plastic head, which gives, gives it a more tack sound, which is more prevalent in rock and metal. The felt gives it a kind of softer sound, which you'll see in other kinds of music. Uh, so I just use plastic. You, you know, you can fool around with these settings if you want. I'll actually switch the brushes so you can hear it. Oh, apparently I don't have the, uh, the brushes installed. But if you did have them installed, then you would be able to hit these and actually hear different sounds. Uh, so I'm going to go to drumsticks. I think when I installed Superior, I opted not to, to use them because I knew that I would never touch them. And obviously, since I've been using them for years, I didn't even know that I didn't have them, so I was right in that assumption. Um, by default, Superior Drummer, for me at least, always goes to negative 4.4 decibels. I always bring that up to somewhere around a little under zero or something, because um, that, that just makes it louder in the mix. Um, you could just turn down your other instruments, but I find that I can bring it here and it'll be safe as far as not peaking. Um, so in this window, you know, we've covered how to switch drums and how to change the volumes. Um, what you can also do is go into the mixer. And here, the one I was talking earlier, when you can actually mix your stuff down in your actual mixer inside your DAW, you can do that all here. Now, you can't use your own stuff, at least not to my knowledge. They do have these default things that are usually all you need. So on your bass drum, you might want to throw an EQ on. You might want to cut the, the, like the super low frequencies and boost a certain frequency or something. Um, whatever you want to do out of that. You know, there's filters. Again, I haven't really had to mess with those. <clears throat> there's gates, so you can apply a noise gate. Compressor. And trans, which I have never messed with it, but I'm assuming trans stands for transients. Um, so yeah, you can mess with these as much as you want, use them or not use them as much as you want. You have bleed control. Bleed control controls how much... Um, how much sound you will get between microphones from other drums. And you can actually go in here and you can say, well, in my um, bass drum I want to hear also the snare or something. And that, that helps control the level of um, 
realism that you apply to your query. So now that we're on, on the topic of bleed, I want to actually demonstrate that to you. So now I'll cover how you can actually make your um, any kind of drum beat that you want to do. So I always right click and do create empty MIDI region. There might be another way to do that, but that's how I've always done it. And I'm just going to put a loop on just so we don't have to keep hitting play. I guess I'll make it two bars for now. And so what you get initially is you get this piano roll. And the, the piano roll is where you actually program your drums. So this might look a little daunting at first, but it's, it's really not anything to be scared of. A every one of these piano keys represents something in Superior. And you can actually customize it to make this whatever you want to represent anything in here. And you can save presets and stuff to make this all easier to do in the future. Um, I haven't touched it. I just keep the default. Um, sometimes I'll have to add a new kind of hit when I want two different kinds of ride hits. But aside from that, it's not something you'll need to mess with, at least not in this video. So if I go over here, I happen to know, um, at least in logic, that C1 is the bass drum. Also, uh, B1, or maybe this is B0, is the bass drum. And it sounds like they're two different hits. I always just use C1. Um, and that's the bass drum. So what I can actually do in Logic, and I can, I can hold the Command button, and I can click on C1. And you see here I get this little note. And from left to right is the grid in terms of time. So just like I have my bars separated up here, I have my bars separated down here. And it's broken down into certain kind of um, divisions. You, you can change that. Um, and you, you, can, you can even at swing to your notes, you can actually use some kind of keyboard and program your notes and then quantize them if you want. Um, we're not going to cover all that in this video. Uh, we're just trying to get the basics down here. Um, maybe in the future if you want it. Let me know if, if you want something specific. Um, and then so now we have a bass drum sound. And uh, you know, at first you, know, you, you, you have it here, it's at a certain volume and you can extend it, make it as long as you want. For drums it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like if I, if I make this this long, bass drum, and if I make it this short, it's still the same sound. Um, drums, you hit them and they ring out, so it doesn't really make sense to have, like piano, you'd have sustain on a certain note. So if you want to change the volume for this, um, up here in the right, there's this, these, the hamburger, as, as it's called on the internet, where you can kind of click and expand a menu. And for me, at least, it automatically loads events. Um, if, if you might see this is where you set tempos, time signatures, and markers, but events is what you want for MIDI. And so you can actually click your note in here, and it'll highlight over here. And the value is what's actually changing your volume. So it goes from 0 to 127, which is a standard um, software range um, in terms of, of analog values. Um, so for me, I usually set it around 110. It depends on the kind of music you want, how you're mixing it and such. So I just, you know, just so you know, that's what I happen to use. Um, and, and now we have, we can control the length, which for drums doesn't matter, and the actual volume of your, of all your individual hits. So let's start actually, actually making something. So I can add a symbol, which I happen to know is there. And I also can load a snare which I happen to know, know is a D1. So, slow a standard 4, 4 beat. Make my cymbals a little quieter. Add some bass drums. And add a second cymbal or something. And if I want to play this, I just hit play. So obviously a very boring drum beat. I'll shift this over here. play it now. And down here I can also just highlight things, copy them, and paste them just like you would any kind of object up here. Now I have a two bar drum beat. Alright, so getting back to the settings that we had in here, I was talking about bleed. So what I can do to demonstrate that is I can actually go and I can mute 
various tracks or I can solo various tracks. So I'm going to solo the drum track here, or the bass drum track, rather. And with my actual drum track, I have cymbals and snare. Um, but since the, the just the kick is, is solo, we're only hearing the kick drum. So I can go into my bleed, I can turn on the snare, I can control the volume if I want, and I can go down, and I don't know what symbols I'm using, so I'm just going to highlight every symbol to be safe. But you can actually go in here, and to figure out which symbol is which, you can see symbol 3. And then if you want to know which is which when you're playing, you can see them being highlighted. So I know that symbol 5 and symbol 3 are the symbols that I want, but I'm just going to well, I guess for demonstration, I'll, I'll do that. And so now, I mean, as you just as you just heard it, I, I still have it soloed. And now we can hear a little bit of the of the the snare and the cymbals. Um, and you can do this for every single track. So now I, you know, if I go to this track, I only hear bass drum, and that's because it's the kick out. And you can set all these separately. Um, you can set all the volume separately, so it gives you a lot of control over what sounds you can actually make in Superior Drum Group. Um, so that's it for this video. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment. Please like or subscribe or favorite this video if you enjoyed. It helps me out. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.